Hello, thank you for tuning back in. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Um, this is going to be a quick episode today, a quick update on the neck for the Great Guitar Build-Off 2022, my entry into that. Uh, it is a Crimson Guitars multi-scale uncut kit. Uh, this update on the neck, we're going to primarily focus on an idea I had while I played a gig. Uh, in a very dark area, so it was very difficult to see uh, fret markers. Um, and due to the constraints of the space and how dark it was, it was also difficult to kind of lean over and look at the uh, inlays on the fretboard and the side dots as well. So I had an idea, we're gonna see it take shape in this video. Uh, tune in and uh, see how it goes. So first I had an idea for doing like a 12 fret inlay. Uh, I had some uh, mother of pearl squares lying around, and I thought, oh, well, I could do something at the 12th fret. Things already fretted, and I didn't want to do it, but uh, I don't really care for how it ended up looking. I didn't want to mess around with trying to file those down and, and sand it with the frets already being in since it was a kit. So while it's kind of cool, I abandoned the idea because it's just not what I wanted. Instead... Uh, what I decided I'd do is, you can see I've marked out a little rectangle there. That's the third fret, and where the uh, first side dot fret marker would be. So I thought it might be a cool idea to carve in a, a, a groove and fill it with epoxy resin and glow-in-the-dark powder. And this way, when I'm in those dark situations, this would be a lot easier to see than um, just a simple side dot. And, you know, there are guitars made with Lumen Lay, which, if you don't know what those are, those are um, glow-in-the-dark side dots. Uh, and they work great, but um, I didn't want to mess around with the fretboard. I, I mentioned a couple times, this is a kit. Uh, when I started working on this, I didn't really... I wasn't really that confident in my abilities to undo what someone else had done really well nor did I want to because I wasn't so confident that I could do it really well myself. So I decided, what if I just carve these grooves in and pour in this epoxy resin and glow-in-the-dark powder? So here you see me marking out the 12th fret. 12th fret gets two dots. Uh, so I figured, well, we'll do two uh, little epoxy pours on that one fret. And I'm only doing 3, 5, 7, 9, 12... And I figured after the 12th fret, uh, I would be just fine in figuring out where I was from there since the frets are all much closer. And the finger spacing is a little more uh, conducive to the actual width of my actual finger. So here we are just kind of marking the outline of each of those little channels with some carving tools and moving along to a V gouge that I have uh, and just try to be real careful. Uh, now this is something that, you know, having, af having done it, I didn't have this idea until after I had carved the neck into the shape that I wanted, but in hindsight, the easier and probably much better and cleaner way of doing this would be to leave your neck uncarved and carve these channels in it. Uh, and rather than a V, probably at that point, you just want to carve straight down and, and do like a, a rectangular channel. But uh, that's not the situation I was in. So here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm pouring in some dye, some white dye. Uh, and I believe this is mix all dye. And um, once the dye dries, then and I kind of paint it in there, I clean it up a little bit. Once the dye dries, then I will mix epoxy resin, uh, the two parts. And this is just standard, like, craft epoxy re resin uh, with some glow-in-the-dark powder. And for this, uh, I did a few tests. I'm not going to show video of those tests. But um, I think I ended up with, like, a sky blue kind of shown or glowed the best out of the, the few colors that I tried. I think I tried pink. I think I tried purple. Uh, a an emerald green and uh, the sky blue worked the best and again these, these these are all craft items that I got on Amazon 
the uh, I'm using the heat gun here to kind of coax the bubbles that are in up. When you heat it up, those bubbles um, come to the surface and then pop. And then you're left with a flat surface. I've taped everything off, but like I said, it would have been much easier if I had done this before I carved the neck because I'm working on a curved surface here. So I was a little worried about it pouring over. Try to clean it up as much as I can. And here we get a nice good look at what that, uh, what that looks like after pouring. Here's the tape reveal, which, uh, you know, a lot of people putting up videos of taking tape, peeling tape off of things. It looks real nice, you know, and smooth. Uh, wasn't that nice or smooth for me. Uh, because of the epoxy resin, stuff was sticking to parts that I didn't intend it to. Uh, but uh, here we are nonetheless. Uh, and I knew, you know, I was going to do sanding to this anyway. So here's the sanding. And you can kind of see some tape sticking off the side there. It comes off no problem. Uh, I believe I'm using 120 grit sanding disc uh, that I would normally use on a random orbital sander, but I'm using it by hand. And so I got that tape off and just going at it, go up to 240, then 320. And here is some naphtha that I put on the neck, and it just looked, man, that sapili looks so good. The, the channels themselves are a little sloppy, but I uh, really feel like this was the best I could do without further damaging the neck. And finally, we get a view of what that glow-in-the-dark looks like after it's been charging up. Now, it does need to charge the glow-in-the-dark powder, and um, you get about... If you do 10 seconds of like light on each one, you get about 20 minutes of good glow. So that's kind of how it works out. And here, what I'm doing uh, is doing a pour fill. I'm using epoxy resin again, same stuff that I use for the inlay. And I'm just uh, trying to even out the pores and gaps in the wood grain itself. Uh, and so epoxy resin poured on top, kind of spread around, and then cleaned up. Uh, don't want to leave it too thick. I learned this method from the uh, Driftwood Guitars uh, guys. They did a video on the Stumac channel of how to finish an electric guitar. I thought it was a pretty good informative series on how to finish. They did a spray finish. But the pour fill was kind of what I took away of like, this is the thing that I have not done a great job of in my previous builds. So I give it a shot here. Just trying to get it into all the nooks and crannies. Now, I set up this portable spray booth that I purchased, and in my backyard, I uh, am wearing a mask. Uh, I was really concerned. I don't. Uh, I don't have a great space for spraying, and the last couple of spray jobs I've done, they, uh, I got a bit of dust and debris, detritus, detritus. I don't know how you're supposed to say it, uh, onto the finish, and it was very difficult to get off. So here we're just going at that cavity cover, uh, electronics cavity cover, and now I'm spraying the, uh, the neck itself. We did the pour fill, so this is just a gloss clear coat that I'm putting on the neck. This is the first clear coat that I've done on a neck. Usually I oil them, which I like the, the look and feel, but after I finished, this was the first coat, uh, the thing they don't tell you about the portable spray booth is that they can be blown over by the wind. So there's there's the tent and there's the, my guitar neck on the ground. Now, luckily, this must have happened after it had dried quite a bit. So there was no damage, nothing, nothing too dirty about it. And I was able to just set it up in my garage and get to work again. Now, I'm not showing all of it, but uh, I think I probably did about 16 coats. Uh, and I really, really love the result that I got 
Um, you do kind of see there, there are some scratch marks from the Shinto rasp that I didn't quite sand out. Uh, and that's something I wish I would have paid more attention to. But uh, here we are getting the last couple of clear coats on the neck and the electronics cavity cover. And what we're left with is a nice, shiny, glossy finish on both of these. And this, I think, was even before I did any wet sanding at all. Uh, just look great, and I will definitely be doing it again on my next build. Right, so in this episode, we finished the neck. I added that uh, glow-in-the-dark inlay along it. Probably the wrong order of operations, just because I had the idea after I carved the neck. Uh, like I mentioned, it probably would have been easier to do before I had carved it. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, and you, uh, you you figure out ways to get what you want done, uh, done on whatever you're working on. So next up, we'll start looking at the body. I'll probably separate that into two videos, just like the neck here, uh, with the end, uh, and then going into final assembly, which will probably only be one video. We'll see uh, that at the end of that one will be the sound test of the guitar. I can tell you it's already built. Uh, I love the way it plays. I love the way it sounds. The the special surprise, we'll, we'll leave the pickups for later. You'll see them. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen the guitar. You've already seen it in action. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you coming to watch the video. Uh, I appreciate you sticking around. And uh, hopefully you'll stay around for the next couple. We'll do a final uh, super cut. So if you just wanted to watch the whole thing in one video, and hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, I'm trying to keep the whole, every video in this series a little shorter. Uh, but uh, thank you again, and uh, enjoy. Have a great rest of your week.